Welcome to Powerful, Wild and Magical, the podcast for the female leader who wants to reconnect with her true essence, step into her divine feminine power and make a huge impact in the world. I am your host, Nadia Gargalo, and in today's episode, our beautiful guest is Jessica Krita. Jessica is a business coach who helps her clients master visibility, sales and energetic embodiment so that they can create recurring income and scale to multi-six figures with the impact too much. In this solar conversation, we talk about stepping and holding your power as a leader, what really means being in your power, how to use power as a leader and how to hold your power during challenging times. If you want to step into your power more as a leader and make a bigger impact, you are going to love this episode. So let's dive in. Jessica, welcome to the show. I'm so, so excited to have you here. I love the topic we are going to be discussing today. All things power. I think it's such an important topic to talk about. So welcome to the show. Thank you. Yes, I'm so excited. I could talk about this all day. So I'm excited to dive in. <laughs> yeah, I love this topic as well. I think it's it's been a, a very discovery journey for me to really find my power and I think a lot of people are going to resonate with the things that we are going to share today. Um, So let's start with describing power. Yeah so when I'm talking about power what I'm really talking about comes down to leadership like standing in your power as a leader like to me it means having that knowing from within and really becoming unshakable like leading no matter what challenges arise not needing external validation to prove your worth or your authority like when you know who you are and you're great at what you do and you know what you bring to the table it doesn't matter if someone questions it or doesn't understand it because you know and your people will feel that and they'll be attracted to it that's very powerful so when it comes to finding your power as a leader mm-hmm. um because i know many entrepreneurs struggle to really find their power um what would you say about that how can they they find their power how can they find their power that's such a good question mm-hmm. so um this for me, it starts with intention and awareness. Like it's so easy to just kind of go about your life kind of on autopilot, doing the same thing over and over again and wondering why it's not working and really stepping into leadership and owning your power. It takes awareness. So I'll share with you actually what I have most of my clients do early in our journey together. And this is how they start to create results really quickly by shifting from kind of a past version of themselves into their higher potential and stepping up as real leaders. So the first thing that I have them do is actually set their really expansive goal. So it's usually a goal around money. It's like something for the year or for the quarter, because I find setting a monthly goal can be kind of limiting. But because the money that we make is really a reflection of the impact we're having, setting an expansive money goal, I find very powerful. So we set a money goal that feels possible, but expansive so that they can rise to the occasion. And so like, let's say that you want to do a $30,000 quarter. If you're listening, honestly, this would be a really good time to take some notes because this is really powerful. So say you want to do a $30,000 quarter or insert whatever your personal goal is. The first thing I'll do with them is slow things down and really feel into what it actually feels like to do 30K in three months. So imagine yourself receiving it. Imagine yourself celebrating it. See it coming in. Like, what do you see happening around you when you're receiving that? And we really stay here until they actually feel that feeling in their body. So this is something you want to take a few moments to actually do. And for me, like, 
I don't see pictures when I visualize. So visualizing isn't particularly powerful for me. So talking it out loud or journaling it is really powerful. Some of my clients do visualize really well and see themselves receiving it and play their own kind of movies in their head. <laughs> visualizing as well. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Yeah. Um, And so really it is like leaning on whatever tool works for you to bring up this feeling of actually experiencing that $30,000 or whatever that number is for you, feeling it in your body. And what does it actually feel like to have that result? Because when we're feeling stressed, when we're feeling kind of less than when we're feeling scared or sad, like our shoulders are hunched. We might have like, I always feel it in my stomach, kind of that pit in your stomach that or kind of butterflies. Or, you know, kind of tighter in the chest because we're not breathing fully when we are nervous. And so when we're able to really tap into like, okay, what does it actually feel like to receive this goal, to exist having this goal? It usually does create a more expansive feeling in the body. And again, like you might feel kind of a lighter feeling in your stomach. Some of my clients describe like just feeling their shoulders drop or even a lightness in their heart. Some of them feel it in their head. So it's different for everybody, but it's actually like tapping into that feeling. And then once you feel it, then we go deeper because now you're in this place where you're actually like experiencing your result. And so we're starting already to tap into that version of you who has that result and who I would consider to be that leader version of you. And so then I ask them, like, now that you're making 30K in a quarter, now that this is your new normal, what do you think? Like, what kind of thoughts do you have about life, about yourself, about your possibilities, about your clients, about your goals, like anything? What kind of thoughts do you have? And then what do you feel? So what kind of feelings do you experience? Like, you probably feel more confident, empowered, unshakable, Um, and then finally, what do you do? So this is more of that action piece. And this is not just related to business though. Like it's not just, oh, I show up on Instagram every day. I love that so much. I love that so much because you're talking about feeling it first and then taking the action rather than taking the action to then feel this or that way. Exactly, exactly. Because when we're taking action from a place of kind of our lower selves, like from that place of feeling scared or trying to like strategically solve a challenge that comes up for us again and again and again, and we just go straight to action of trying to like solve this problem or fix the thing, it never actually gets solved because we're approaching it from this like the same approach again and again and again. And so it doesn't change. When you can elevate your feelings and elevate your thoughts and elevate your being, you become that much more powerful in the strategic work that you now do. So when I'm asking like, what do you do? It's also stuff like, how do you set boundaries with clients perhaps? Or are you going to the spa once a month? Like, how are you caring for yourself? Are you taking time off? Are you really taking 25 discovery calls per month? Is that part of your vision? A lot of times it's not. (laughs) (laughs) I totally get that because like we push ourselves so so much and then we need to have these many calls and and then we are overwhelmed and stressed and so busy. And then when you really check, is this within my vision? It's actually not. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's so, so true. I think we can all relate to this in one way or another. And I have to say, like, I started my business from a very masculine kind of perspective. You know, like I have that history. I did business degree. I worked in finance and then like corporate marketing and communication. So I have that very masculine approach and only started to bring this kind of side into my business as I actually grew and worked with coaches myself and finally found how powerful it was. And so to me, on just a really logical level too, it makes sense, like as we are stepping into this higher version of ourselves and how it affects the actions that we take and makes our, like, it makes our content more potent. It makes us more powerful showing up on video. It shifts how people feel when we're talking to them, like when we're talking to clients or potential clients or peers or other leaders. And so it really affects like absolutely everything that we do. So it's very, very powerful work. Yeah. So could you share some examples of what being in your power as a leader will be as opposed to not being in your power? Because I know after being for so long in such a 
big in general masculine society, power has been related to control, to being manipulative, to having power over, over others. So could you share what power, examples of what power is and what is not? Yeah. Oh, I love this. That's so true. Like we have this misconception that it might mean like having control or really it means having power over other people. And that's not what we're talking about here. Like that's actually the opposite of what I would consider to be really standing in your power because like, I know that when we truly step into our full selves and we're trusting ourselves as leaders, we actually don't have to assert dominance. Like we don't need other people to validate us. And so I find that like, I notice this in myself, I'm able to be more vulnerable with my clients than ever before. Cause I'm not questioning my ability to lead them. Like I know I've had experiences in programs before where, you know, somebody might feel like they have to like always be, leading like they always have to be asserting dominance they always have to be kind of that step above and I don't feel that with my clients the energetic exchange is very balanced and I feel very safe to lead them but also to learn from them and to be vulnerable with them and to share my own challenges with them because I'm not questioning my ability to be there (sighs) I love, I love that of I'm not questioning my power as a leader. And I think that's so, so important because like we are always doubting our worth, our value. And I think that's, that's so powerful to actually step into that power of believing in you and what you do and your power as a leader. Yeah, exactly. And I, I love what you said there. And it's just, it really is. It's about, it's not about anyone else. It's not about anyone else's perception of you. It's about you being that leader first and you feeling yourself as a leader first. And I think like something we can all relate to is like, I used to get really triggered if I would get cold pitched in the DMS. Like, yes, we all know this happens. (laughs) Yeah. I feel less and less, but it still happens. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Luckily, a lot of people are, you know, kind of savvying up and teaching better, better options. Um, But there's still people that are teaching it. And so there's still people who are doing it. And it used to trigger me. And I know it was because there was this part of me that wanted them to recognize that, like, they needed me more than I needed them. (laughs) That's really believing in your power. (laughs) (laughs) But so that's, Even that though, like that is kind of a disempowered approach because like it bothered me. Like I needed them to know I was successful, if that made sense. Like that's where I was coming from in my mind when I was triggered by it. And once I really like let go of that need for external validation and like truly stepped into where I feel I am now as a leader, like it doesn't bother me anymore. I don't I don't care. It's like that difference between telling everyone you're a leader and just being a leader, which is funny to say right now, because I'm talking to you about (laughs) how I am a leader, but like, ultimately you have to see yourself as a leader before other people will. And so that's what I focus on. And it's where the work that I do with my clients starts before worrying about what anyone else thinks. Mm -hmm. How can women step more into their power as a leader? What things can they do? Yeah. So I would say like starting with that exercise I shared at the beginning, honestly, um, just to take that a little bit of a step further, like once you've identified with intention, like who you truly want to be, and that like, this is always going to be defined by you. Like how I lead is going to be different than my client wants to lead. It's going to be different than how you lead and what you value as a leader. And so it's always defined by you. It's not defined by what anyone says you should do or what you think you have to be because you think you have to be like someone else. So it's not about changing who you are. It's about just really stepping into who you truly desire to be deep down from yourself. And so when you do that, like, what do I think? What do I feel? What do I do? Exercise. It kind of creates this baseline of like, okay, I can see what I'm growing into and who I want, like who I want to be. And I can see kind of where I am now and some of the gaps that are filling. And then 
it doesn't just end there though. Like we would leave, if we were doing that together on a call, the client leaves feeling really good. But then two days later, it's really easy to slip out of that. And we even forget because our mind is so used to thinking and feeling and responding in certain ways. So I set a very specific intention to tune into that every single day until you just literally feel like you're being it, you're doing it, you're existing there. And then that's when the result becomes that most natural next step. So it's that intention to do it every day. Does that make sense? It does a lot. And I think this is something to just soak in. I, I love what you were saying about, like, you don't need to become anything, like just stepping into your authentic self and who you truly are. And I think so many people struggle with that because, again, the society we have been living in has made us compete and achieve all the things and take so much on. And we, we end up just, like, putting our identity in how much we can achieve or, like, having a certain label and... I find that people struggle to find that who am I, who, who I am truly inside. And for that, I don't think you need to do anything, but just really connecting with yourself at a deeper level and stop trying to put labels on yourself or become something that you are not. One thing is having the desire of becoming a better version. And another thing is trying to find a specific identity or like finding your power in that. <laughs> yes oh I could not agree more and like you're so right the comparison really is what it is right like there's always going to be somebody who is further along than you or who knows more than you that you perceive or who has better content than you or has more clients than you or you know has better hair than you <laughs> like who knows what we're telling ourselves is the reason somebody is going to be more successful than us and that's actually an interesting thing I find with a lot of my clients when they do really commit to stepping into leadership. There's this identity shift from like seeing yourself as the client, because I work with a lot of coaches. Um, and so it's an identity, identity shift going from like seeing yourself as the client, as the consumer, as the audience, to shifting into being the leader, the creator, the coach. And part of that, like unfollow those people you're comparing yourself to. If it's friends and you don't want to ruffle feather feathers, like mute them. You're allowed to do that. If you find that you're coming across something every day that makes you feel like less than your full self or makes you question your worth because you're doing things differently than someone else who you perceive to be more successful, unfollow that. Like you don't need that popping up in your life every day. And I find that when people do that, they start to find their own voice so much more because they're not trying to reach to other people who they're kind of like telling themselves, oh, I need to be more like this. So I'm going to talk about this because she talked about this. Like they're able to really step into and start to find their own voice and start to voice their own opinions and show up with their own authority and really deepen that trust in themselves. Oh, yes, yes, yes to this. Because we can fall into the trap of the comparison and and we all have our own unique light. You don't need to be like anyone else, say the things that someone else who is more successful is saying or not even having X amount of clients or making X amount of income. Like you can shine your life at any level you are, whatever results you are having. So yeah, I think that's really powerful. Yeah, I completely agree. I completely agree. And like you said, like, it's not about the clients and the money. Like, I really think that like the being comes before the clients and the money. <laughs> Absolutely. So what happens when you are facing challenges and then you don't feel that powerful, <laughs> all the negative beliefs or emotions are coming up? How can you hold your power in those tough times? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um again like the process I shared earlier is kind of the baseline of this because um like how we lead through challenges it's going to emerge to be more powerful and impactful than how we lead when everything is just obviously working and flowing in our favor and as we grow in business and you know achieve our bigger and bigger goals. And as we grow, there's also the duality to that. Like there's the additional challenges that can pop up along the way to that. And I really don't believe that we're going to 
achieve a, you know, level in business, if you want to put it that way, um, before we're really ready to hold both sides of that, like more clients means you have to be able to hold space for more people with different kinds of needs who might require different approaches. And it also means more potential for clients who are going to quit. Like you, when you have one client, you know, what's going on with that client. When you have 20 clients, there's the potential that a client is probably going to leave you one day. It's not something we need to like wait around and like expect or every time we achieve something to kind of like wait for the other shoe to drop. But these things do happen and we have to be prepared to handle them. And it's who we're being before that challenge arises that is going to affect how we act when we are experiencing the challenge. So like start this work today, (laughs) right now, if things are going well, or if they're not going well, like start this work today and you're going to be more equipped to handle it when something does come up. Yeah. I know you have been facing some challenges recently, which actually both of us did (laughs) and we connected after those events. Would you like to share a little bit about it? Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yes, this definitely applies very well to this conversation. And I just think it's so interesting that you and I found each other because of this experience too, which I think is going to probably be a really good thing to prove my point a little bit later on. But <laughs> um, I'll kind of start a little bit at the beginning. So back in November of 2021, I started really focusing on who I need to be in order to be the version of myself who does 500K in 2022, okay? So that was my, like when we talk about an expansive goal, that was my expansive goal that I'm stepping into that level of leadership, that level level of impact, that level of service that would naturally lead to 500K in 2022. So I was moving into myself every single day, really connecting with this and really feeling this like, elevated sense of power. And then on December 14th, yes, I remember the day, (laughs) my Instagram account with about 4,000 followers and years of business progression was disabled with no warning, no reasoning, like literally nothing. It was just there. And then it was gone. And so I signed all of my clients in 2021 from Instagram. Like I passed six figures in 2021 from Instagram only. And then suddenly that platform was just gone. So of course, in that moment, as you can relate to, it was very jarring and upsetting. Of course, like you're allowed to feel feelings, you're allowed to have emotions, but I really like, I didn't freak out and I didn't spiral in all of, into all of the ways that this would ruin my business or set me back or like, you know, ruin everything that I've created up until this point or break down my business. And instead, after the initial kind of shock moment, as I processed it, I decided that I was going to lead through this just like I would anything else. And it ended up leading to some of the most powerful conversations we've ever had in the mastermind that I run. And I was able to show my clients that this doesn't have to stop them. Cause I mean, I, all of my clients came to me on Instagram, so they're using Instagram as well. And a lot of them like literally lose sleep over this kind of thing before it even happened to me <laughs> would have these like horror stories in their head of what am I going to do if I lost my Instagram account? Like when this happened to me, one of them came and told me like, I feel like I would literally die <laughs> if this happened to me. <laughs> and she said that to me. And so that moment, honestly, I think was so valuable to both of us because she was feeling that way. Other clients of mine are feeling that way. I know people in my audience are feeling that way who are benefiting from this as well. And it felt like maybe I needed to experience this so that I can show them that it doesn't have to be as dramatic as we build it up in our heads, that it doesn't have to stop us as much as we tell ourselves it would stop us. And I mean, like, what a great story to tell on a podcast, right? (laughs) Absolutely. And it's, it's funny because we found each other and the same thing happened to me. And we actually both got the, the account deactivated twice because yeah. you started a new one, which is when we started to talk, when we con- connected. 
and you lost that one. And I, it happened the same thing to me. I started to build a new one. It was building really well in like just three or four weeks. Uh, I had a lot of engagement and then I lost the second one as well. And yeah, you got into this moment of, of like panic and confusion and all the emotions happening. But you get to choose. You get to choose if you want to let that pull you down <laughs> or if you want to em- get empowered from, from that. And for me, it, was, it ended up being a very good experience because when I started as a coach, my account had over 10K followers. Um, and I've been coaching for three and a half years now. Yeah. But I started that account being a self-love and full freedom coach for binge eaters. So a lot of the audience I had there was from what I was doing previously to what I'm doing now. Uh, so it was kind of a thing in my mind, should I start a new account with an audience that's more engaged and more aligned to what I do now? Uh, but I kept not doing it. Like I kept procrastinating because, you know, I have 10K followers. So... <laughs> And it was a blessing in these guys in the end because it forced me to really to really start a new audience. And it forced me to as well rethink about my business and go even deeper into things I wanted to do. So that's how you can really step into your power and see the opportunities in the challenges that you face. Oh, I love that story. Like, I feel like you got what you needed. <laughs> Even yeah. though you didn't necessarily want it right in that moment. That's so interesting that you were already thinking about that. And then it was just like, okay, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, account. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, but at the end of the day, it's always up to you how you want to see the challenges and if you want to come from a place of power or a place of disempowerment when you face yeah. a challenge. So I know you have given a lot of advice already, but is there any personal advice you would like to share with our listeners? Um, I would say like the core of it is trust yourself. Like first and foremost, trust yourself. And if you're not used to trusting yourself, like play with it like an experiment, like do that exercise I shared earlier and then try and experiment with yourself. Like, what if I did just trust myself for the next 30 days? Like, what if when the thoughts come up of like, I can't have this, it's not going to work. Why would people sign with me when they can sign with her? Any of these thoughts that we have that come in, shift into like, what would it actually feel like if I trusted myself? What would that be like? And then go after what you want because you really can have it. And when you're doing this kind of internal work, it affects the results that you create so incredibly deeply and I think like our experiences whether our Instagram accounts are just such a good example and like I'm here right now because of that experience and I have signed clients since then who found me for the first time on this new account like maybe this is how our paths were meant to cross and they wouldn't have signed with me if I started showing up with like, oh, I only have 10 followers kind of energy. Like people signed up and paid thousands of dollars to work with me when I had less than 100 followers because I was showing up with that authority and I was still leading through this experience and they felt that. So any like just let this be an example to you that anything that you're telling yourself is something you have to wait for before you can lead or before you can attract or before you can start to have the level of results you want. It's not real. Like that number of followers isn't real. We sign one client at a time, whether we have one follower or 10,000 followers. And I you so have to trust. Yeah. I agree so much with that because I started to be my new one and it took a little bit to, to get momentum, but like I signed up three clients in January and I have 500 right now and I had 10K before. And believe me, it was slower. <laughs> So yeah, the number of followers doesn't mean anything. It's, it's a lot about what you believe you can do and, and staying in, in that power. Whether you have 10 or 10K, it doesn't matter. Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. And um, I think like one of the biggest things I learned moving through 2021 and all of the 
gorgeous wins. Like we talked about a lot of challenges today, but there were a lot of really gorgeous wins and celebrations along the way as well. And I coming from that very like masculine kind of background, you know, with the university, the corporate job, everything, I'm your very typical like history of like people pleasing, overthinking millennial. Okay. (laughs) That's where I was coming from when I first started my business. And what I've really learned over this past year, particularly, is that every time I've achieved what I wanted, I've looked back and wished that like the me from three months ago, three weeks ago, even yesterday, sometimes like could have known that we were going to achieve that thing that we wanted. And sometimes even more like that, it all happens, that it all works out. And not once did I look back and say like, oh, I should have been more stressed. I should have stayed up later. I should have worked harder. I should have done more. I should have been more scared. It was always like, oh, look, like we're here. We did it. We achieved this thing that we were so scared of three weeks ago. We could have slept so much better. We could have been so much nicer to ourselves. We could have been so much happier and enjoyed the journey along the way. So that's why my like kind of overarching theme here is trust yourself so you can enjoy that journey. And like, you're going to achieve what you want, but you get to enjoy yourself right now too. Yeah, enjoy yourself right now. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes to that. Because we are so many times in just the future that we completely forget to enjoy the moment. And I think as entrepreneurs, especially enjoying the journey is, is so, so important. Yeah. Okay, so just before we finish the powerful, wild and magical question, I would love to know what's something you are absolutely in love with right now in your life that's lighting your soul up. Uh, yes, so I can honestly tell you, like I'm so deeply in love with my life right now. Like I have left that, you know, people pleasing, overthinking, well, the overthinking still comes in sometimes, but I've left a lot of that behind and I'm so deeply in love with my life and I have so much to be grateful for, like from where I live to my family, to this business that I've created. But if I was to bring it down to one thing for this podcast right now, something that really stands out is just, I am so deeply in love with my clients right now. Oh. Like, I can, <laughs> yeah. oh, yes. Like I can just tell you, like every single one of them is my favorite client because that is the standard that I set back at the beginning of 2021. And like, that is what I'm experiencing now. Like not only are they great at what they do, but they're so passionate, they're committed to having such a positive impact and growing with integrity and being the change that they want to see in the world. So I'm so lit up to support them. And like our relationship goes so much deeper than just that client coach relationship. Like, I feel like we are real friends and that kind of relationship wasn't possible when I wasn't able to be vulnerable and to lead in the way that I'm leading right now and to be human with them and create those deeper relationships with I think which I think really empowers them to be stronger leaders as well and so ultimately we rise together and so that's what's lighting me up right now oh yes (laughs) yes yes and that's actually the magic of being in your power and being in alignment that you actually get to magnetize the soul clients and when you are in your power as well you know when to say yes and no and who is the one who needs to work with you and who is not for you yeah absolutely (laughs) okay so where can people people find you if you want to share and if you want to share any offers programs with our yeah. audience. Absolutely. So you can find me on Instagram at Jess Krieger coaching. You'll find me on my new account there. So come on in, like say hello. Don't be afraid to send me a DM. I would love to connect with you guys and really like, let's just start there. Um, I do have a mastermind that's opening next week called the bad bitch society. I hope that's okay to say on your podcast. Yeah. yeah no. <laughs> share anything that you want to share about your offers programs. It was more so the word bitch I was worried about, actually. (laughs) But yeah, so so I have the Bad Bitch Society um, Mastermind opening up next week. So I'm really excited about that. 
Um, and that is designed to help coaches and also service providers. You don't have to be a coach, but to help you grow from those kind of one to maybe maxing out at 5k months to creating a recurring income of 9k cash for yourself, which I find is just such an empowering thing to have some recurring income. And again, like to bring this to a more strategic note, I was able to weather this Instagram store much easier because I did already have income locked in for 2022, which made losing an Instagram account and a, you know, large audience of potential buyers much easier to grow from because I wasn't starting January at zero dollars. So that's what the Bad Bitch Society is going to be all about. It's going to be the internal work. That's why it's the Bad Bitch Society because it's starting to step into that bad bitch energy, but then also the strategic work around visibility and sales. So if you want to know more about that, you can connect with me on Instagram, but I'm just so grateful for being here today. Thank you so much. Thanks to you for being here. It was a beautiful conversation. So thanks a lot for being here today. Thanks for listening, beautiful soul. I hope you liked this episode. If you did, please subscribe, share it, tag me and Jess, and share your thoughts and breakthroughs with us. I would love to connect with you. Follow me on Instagram where you can find more of what I do and reach me out in the DMs. I can't wait to see you in the next episode. Powerful, white, and magical being.